number three in gold. A two-time All-SEC member. And we are underway. We're going to see some man-to-man -man defense early. We're going to see some extended pressure. But right out of the gate, the Tigers are a physical inside team. Mizzou with the ball. And those gold uniforms and FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast University in the green and blue, fitting on St. Patty's Day. And that is Sierra the lefty, six foot four, coming through the first bucket. Boy, keep an eye on the perimeter here because you're going to see five green jerseys extended. This is a team that really uses the three point shot. That's Nelson finding a lane but can't, and the board pulled down by Cunningham. Boy, Lee, she can see the difference physically in size early in this game. You know, the Eagles have got to be a team that can make use of transition, penetrate and pitch, and get some outside firepower. We watched the team's practice yesterday. The team in green, FGCU, does not have a single player six feet tall or bigger. And you look across at Mizzou, and it seems like they're all that stature. And a foul on the drive on Amber Smith. Head coach of Missouri, her eighth season with the Tigers, Robin Pinchton, trying to get this team to the Sweet 16. They have fallen in the second round for two years. And they are not shy about their goals. They wanted to host this year as a five seed. They missed it by one step on that seed line. So they headed out here to Stanford, California, and a big block there by the redshirt senior. That's Jordan Frerichs. He's the head coach of FGCU, the one only coach of this program. He does a fabulous job. His 16th season built this program from scratch, and he has this program rolling in the NCAA tournament five of the last seven years. Well, he really has, and it, it, it's such a unique team. You know, we're going to see it play out today, but the things they do from a skill standpoint are very unique, and that has brought, I think, them to another level. Because, you know, you, here you got the Tigers in game adjusting to a team that really features some different things from an offensive tack. Look how they spread the floor. Look how they use the three. That's Taylor Gratigan, long on her ball. We expect a lot of those here today by the Eagles. They've made 407 threes this year. They lead the nation in attempts and makes. Loose ball on the ground, tied up. Nazrin UL. And right out of the gate, number three right there. Keep an eye on Sophie Cunningham, because I guarantee you the, all the green jerseys as you are going to know where she's at. But what she is, is deceptively good at is getting in the post area and using a post up. She is one of the best shooters in the country, but she also has a physicality and a low block game. It's Adderley putting the ball on the ground too hard. Comes away with her own rebound. And well, you can just read the scouting report to the Tigers. They, they are going one-on-one -on, -one on the penetration and not coming off the extended players. See, no closeout. They're right in their space. That's Nazarene with a good take, finishing with her left hand. Or from California, Murrieta, about a seven-hour drive from the campus of Stanford. Yeah, she likes being in California. There's no question. I, you talked to her yesterday about that. Just a short six-hour drive, but they're going to need that slashing ability. That's Sophie Cunningham drawing the contact inside. Remember, she is six foot one. So she is taller as a guard than any player on the other end. What a take. Yeah, that will be needed because the scheme the Tigers go to are going to force some dribble drive finishes because they're taking away the dribble drive pitches. But sweet Sophie is, is our, our our friend Andy Blanders refers to her. I'll tell you, she is nothing <laughs> sweet about India. She is physical down there. She is strong. And she knocks down throws. An excellent free throw shooter, one of the best in the history of Mizzou women's basketball. 83% yeah. on the season. A three ball knocked down. Now that's Rosemary, the number one three-point shooter for the Eagles. Boy, and the Eagles, I think, will light up. But what you saw the Tigers in your 2-2-1, two, two, well, that's going to give them a chance to shoot the three. And you could just see the comfort level go to another level right there.
And the offensive foul call, that is what FGCU does. They are undersized, they are used to teams trying to post them up on the box, and they draw the foul. Yeah, you can see right here, look at the congestion. Look, look at their ability. Get to spots, hold their position. Yeah, this is not a new strategy that the Eagles are dealing with. And once again, five out, nobody even near the paint on the offensive end for the Eagles, and they slip inside, but recovered nicely for the block shot is Frerichs. That's her second block already. Yeah, that's big-time recovery right here. This is pretty good action on that pick-and-roll situation. Look at the length. And look at the ability to, to not only block the shot, but keep it in play with two hands. Bill Russell would be proud. <laughs> yes, he would, Coach. Dan Hughes, head coach of the Seattle Storm. And just recently named assistant for the USA national team. Congratulations, Coach. So, that's something every coach cherishes, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited and, and can't wait. But back to this game. Look, look at the... The, the blocker system you call it for the Tigers, the ability for the perimeter to come off of that. They'll square up and play one on one, and you can see the thing. Great take. Owen Sparks got a good start to this game. Two blocks in the bucket. Yeah. And it's interesting how defense transfers to offense. You know, her getting out of the gate defensively just, I think, relaxes her, gets her more active, and you see it at the offensive end. China Dow, number 22 in green on the floor now for the Eagles. Their second leading scorer comes off the bench. Also in the game, you saw the move, Lisa Steradichka. 5'6", redshirt junior from Austria. Well, the Tigers, you can see them, one to go inside. You see, he was doing a pretty good job of defending the post right now, making the Tigers have to play from the pick and roll and the perimeter action. This quarter down low, quick out. Nice pass, can't get a goal for Porter. And the Eagles clear the board. China down, nearly loses it, and then maybe a bit rushed. Throws that one into the stands for the turnover. And that's something you don't see out of this Eagle team. I, going through a lot of years of studying stats, when I went through and saw their first nine players, and eight of those nine have positive assist to turnover, that goes to the teaching of, of that man right there. That ability to be precise, and they are very precise. It's not just a matter of hitting the, it's a matter of hitting the open person in the right spot to shoot the basket. The system by Carl Smesco of the Eagles, because we don't just shoot threes. Yeah. We're not, we are not shot hunting. We spread you out, and we'll take the lane if you want to give it to us. So far, competitive in this one, and the blocking foul called into the game. Jessica Katani, the 5'7 redshirt senior out of Wisconsin. Good job here. Katani's got the right idea, just you can see Fisher's right on top of that. She's in that restricted area, but that's a tough assignment because of the length difference. You know, Sophie has such length in that area. She has physical ability to hold the pin. Not an easy chore for the Eagles. And the turnover, the steal by the Eagles. Pretty dump off pass. And the finish by Katani. And the Eagles taking back the lead. Beautiful two on one. Just the way you want it run all the way to the finish. And the grab. Julian picking up the foul. We got a good one here early in Stanford Card in the Stanford Cardinal home floor. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One, official bank and credit card of the NCAA. Carl Smesco is really difficult. It's a hard matchup in the first round of the tournament. Yeah, and you've got to understand his background. Grew up a son of a high school coach in Akron, Ohio, Revere High School. Uh, I, I remember his father. But he took that knowledge, and, and when he goes into situations, he says, how can we be successful? He's not afraid to look at the game in different ways. And the three ball off the bench, Caleb Michael, the redshirt senior out of Ohio with that three you just mentioned in Ohio. Coordinated. It, it just was, just coordinated meant sometimes, coach. meant to be. But this Mizzou team, you know, the one thing that's concerned me a little early with them is the turnovers. And they came out of that precise, good execution. They had three turnovers in the first five minutes. And that's important. You do not want to turn it over against the Eagles because that could end up in a three.
The Division I Men's Basketball Championship second round continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For match times, go to NCAA.com. For basketball junkies, the absolute best time of the year. I'm, I'm for the multiple TVs in a home. <laughs> Get them all on. Get them on. Put them on the app. Get your iPads out. There's games we all can love right now. We'll have you over, Coach. Yeah. Sounds like I, it, my it, home to a tee. It, it's going to happen. But, <laughs> but right here, you're seeing Missouri coming out of this. Great defense by the Eagles. And the beautiful part about this matchup and what FGCU does to me is how much does Missouri change their rhythm and change what they do offensively to try to take advantage of the smaller FGCU team, or do they just continue to go to their strengths of what got them here? No, no question, and I think, you know, people immediately look, and what a great drive right there, is a factor on the finishes. We've seen that early. But the biggest question is going to be, you know, everybody thinks, well, just get bigger players closer to the basket. But to me, that is not always a formula for success if that's not your normal way of playing. The inside-outside pass to Smith, but the O-board by the Tigers. Frericks with another block on the other end, and then a rebound. And very active, taking advantage of that 6-1 frame. Boy, and, and they are a good rebounding team. This is a team that separated by, e even in conference, by eight and overall by nine over their opponents, game after game. The pull up jumper, two strikes out there by Adderley, and the Eagles are off and running. China Dow finding a seam through the defense. Well, that that is really good investment by these Eagles. A lot of times they just spot up at the three, but they're realizing they got to make some slashing cut. Not only with that slashing cut, but that was a ten on the huge rating for a finished shot because she got off a hard shot and she finished. Here's Cunningham. The double team comes too much. And the foul will be called. <laughs> See, great job here. See, she sees she's denied. Now watch this finish, though. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Angle kind of got it. Brought it around. Running down the floor like yeah, there's nothing to it. <laughs> China Dow, the 5'8 redshirt senior from Louisville, started her career at Middle Tennessee State. And then transfer play for Carl Smesco in this wide-open Eagle system, and she's become a much better three-point shooter. This, that's her game, what we just saw. That's what she's always been good at. Well said, exactly. But this culture in this system kind of puts them in situations where they shoot the three, I would say, even more effective with the free throw. And it's really part of their system. But they, they are so good to me in their action and their precise passing. They waste no time in getting the ball in the right shooting pocket for the three. Cunningham knocks down the two free throws. She's perfect from the line for four points. Down low, they can say too much contact by Porter, and she'll pick up the personal. Good cut, great length. I don't know. I, I think she got up in the air, a little bit of body. But boy, I uh, defensively, if I'm coaching the defense, I'm like, you know, you're play on and you can see a, a nice discussion <laughs> <laughs> Robin's having with the official right there and that's that's courteous no demonstrative just a little dialogue inside it's like the lane violation call that'll wipe away a point for the Eagles so Mizzou maintaining a one-point lead the officials today Tyna Napier Knight Geraldine Smith well, we've had a good first quarter, and I think a learning first quarter. I think both teams are open to kind of finding out what it's really like going against it. Great hands right there. Cunningham trying to sweep the ball, nearly turns it over, but instead it pops free to her. But then the offensive foul called on Frerichs. And this pressure by FGCU. If they get 15 turnovers in a game, they're nearly unbeatable this season and so far a good start defensively coach yeah, a, a very veteran 
reaction to getting screened right there. Uh, there was embellishment, I would say. On, I'm not saying it's not a foul. I do think it's a foul, but a little embellishment never hurt the process. And right down to the other end and scored. There by Julian, the Eagles' leading scorer. She made that one look easy, but a tough take. And no doubt she's the emotional leader of this Eagles team. You can see it at both ends right there. And she has the matchup on Cunningham, the number one scorer for Missouri. The ball poked loose again by the Eagles. Their pressure is really causing problems for Mizzou. Constantly a congested catch. You can see he was out here before the game. I mean, it was two things that jumped out at me. We were here before anybody, at least. But Sophie Cunningham's out here shooting, and Coach Carl is sitting down there spread out with about 20 papers studying the game. And, and that may tell us a story right there. But Sophie was the first, and I thought, who's going to be the first player when you see come out? It was her. It's amazing all the games we do at every level and how often the best shooter is the first one out. Yeah. It's not a coincidence, is it, Coach? No, no. And, you know, arguably, she might be the most efficient player in this tournament. You know, her ability to shoot the three, to, to field goal to the line and convert it to line, just incredible numbers. This is Smith with the baseline jumper, no good. Frericks with another rebound out to Cunningham, and that one is short. Well, with the board. It's China Dow drawing the foul, and that's on Frericks. And that will be her second personal. Yeah, China doing a great job here. She got a closeout. But what she is, is, is she's really unique. Her center of gravity and her strength and, and her ability to get in motion are all very deceptive. They're much faster than you think. She gets a closeout, she's gonna beat you in that nature. Not to shoot the three, although she's developed that, she can break it down. That's a very useful piece against the schemes that the Tigers are exhibiting right now, trying to stop the three-point attack of the Eagles. 65 point, or 65 sent from the foul line she makes one of two but the big news on that is that Ferrix is now on the bench and she already has five boards in this first quarter the pressure by the Eagles 10 seconds to go in this quarter and the foul called underneath and that'll be Michael heading to the free throw line. Yeah, you could see the, the defensive change by the Eagles there on that free throw situation coming back into a zone that they trapped out of aggressively. The NCAA Wrestling Championships can fight in Cleveland, catch the championship finals at 8 Eastern on ESPN 2 PN app and special off the mat coverage on ESPN 3. You can visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. I, am for one, love that app, watching all the games. Under five to go here in the first quarter. Nelson down low, and the finish by Julian. What a finish for the Eagles. They have a four-point lead at the end of one. Just a great job of that brush screen and that action. Julian has just inspired the Eagles early. A great start for the Eagles, the 12 seed with a four point lead on the five seeded Tigers. All right, back here in Stanford, California, the 12 seeded Eagles with a four point lead as we start the second quarter. Right away, though, the is it Cunningham easy for her, the left hand layup. Boy, great run out for Sophie in this game. She'll add that to the four for four free throws. Nice back screen and China Dow wide open. Pass from Nelson. Yeah, Nelson, great look. That's one of the things that I'm so impressed by this Eagle team. And the foul drawn by China Dow against Sierra Porter. That's the second time that they have been able to get down and draw contact. 
watch the Eagles get to spots on the floor. They're just constantly trying to beat Missouri to spots on the floor. And you can see sometimes there's contact. They, they embellished, went to the floor, got a call. And that is the second on quarter. Jordan Ferricks, the other starting big player for Mizzou, already in foul trouble with two. So Missouri is going to have to go a stretch without their two starting bigs. Boy, I am so impressed by Rosemarie Julian. I, I just the way she's playing the game with the presence she's got, with the heart that just comes out in her play. I am so impressed with her. I, I, I know when we were talking to Coach Carl said that she's the emotional leader. And, I, and I'll tell you, she's a good emotional leader. Here at Stanford, one of the best that ever has put on the uniform. The best West Coast program in women's basketball. Stanford, they'll be playing versus the 13 seed Gonzaga Bulldogs. Boy, and Jen Jennifer continues to do some great things with her life. I mean, she's involved now. With, I, I, I saw her at the Basketball Without Borders. She's doing the skill academies around the world, expanding women's basketball from an NBA perspective as well. Around the world, she just continues to, to message basketball and message uh, just a quality of, of not only as a player, but a, a, as an ambassador. One of the best backcourts in the history of college basketball. Jenny yeah. Crazy and Sonia Henney. <laughs> you think they threw it to the right people, Alicia? Yeah. I got a feeling they, they, they were finding that cardinal red time and time again. So the Eagles a five-point lead on the Tigers and another foul drawn on the offensive end for Missouri. The FGCU Eagles. Boy, watch. You, you, you know, you're, you're looking. Look at the left arm. See, you open yourself up when you make contact outside your body, and it moves in a, in a way that displaces. I would say, Coach, that in the SEC, this is the type of physical play that you run into game after game. For FGCU, they knew that this is part of their game plan to draw these fouls. And you said, quote, embellish these fouls. And they put the Tigers in foul trouble. They have. They have. It could have been another call. Contact there. Dow getting into the body of Cunningham. And it pops back out. Sarah Ditchka with the drive, can't finish. And the ball into Jordan Roundtree. You can see both these teams used the four days since selection on Monday. And getting Sophie open there, that's another superior catch basket. Wisely. Neither team is really exploiting the three-point shot. And I think part of that is preparation, having those four days and really honing in on an opponent. You're seeing some very well-prepared teams. The double coming to Cunningham. And that one just rolling off the rim. Trying to establish her on the block. China Dow seeking contact, no call. Yeah. But once again, the O board for the Eagles. Kick out three ball. That's Katani, the red shirt senior, knocking it in. They, this is a team in green, the Eagles, that use the offensive rebound, not for put putbacks, but to shoot the three. It's like a dagger. They want they, that is their opportunity to shoot the three. And the answer there by Kayla Michael, the red shirt, as we mentioned, out of Ohio. Well, twice now she has been precise, top of the key, catch and shoot, finishes, just exactly what you want out of a senior. Erica Nelson with the left hand. They spread you out, and they'll take you to the rim if you extend. No congestion right now. It's one on one at that point. The length has, has been a factor, but they've also found enough finishing ability. Down low, okay, by Nelson. The kick out. Katani! Yep. And Robin Finchin says we need a timeout. The eight-point lead for the Eagles, back-to-back -back threes for FGCU. They have come to play. Twenty-eight, twenty-six, eighteen. great timeout for the Tigers. But they've got to change the direction because right now the Eagles, Florida Gulf Coast University has controlled the tempo of this game. 
problem for the Tigers is they have three starters in foul trouble. Three starters with two fouls and are on the bench. Want to get it down low to Cunningham, and they do pretty reverse. Boy, it, it is. And her ability to finish inside. Wait, wait till you see the full package on the perimeter. You can see how versatile this special player is. Well, she can shoot the three if they want to get her those looks, but against this smaller lineup of the Eagles, they've really concentrated on getting her the ball on the block. Another foul called, this one on the ground. You know, I was looking at the Missouri huddle, and, and, I, and I was watching Robin talk to her team. I got a feeling one of the points of discussion was about the drives that the Eagles are making. More sound. I mean, they're not angry, you know. Missouri has got to stay in the place just like that, either without or without the ball for a longer period, because you're putting too much stress on your defense when it's that direct. Execution on the baseline out of bounds play and another people bucket. So as we go in to, door, to their bench. And they're going to ball to Cunningham. She is catching fire. That is her 12th point. Yeah. You can see a four out, one in, and we've got an idea that Sophie is going to be that one in for a while. You know, execution, you can see Robin imploring her team right there, but execution on the baseline out of bounds, really a great job of cutting. See that little X action right there? That was almost misdirection. And then you've got a diagonal cut right to the basket. And the other thing that this, this Eagle team does so well is their hands ready. And you got, boy, Rosemary is just making a living getting herself with hustle, with action getting herself to that line. She's been a frequent visitor right there, and you can see the separation. Now seven points for the Eagles. Julian missing a second. Ten points already for the 5'11 senior. Welcome in, everybody. This is the Lexington Regional, Stanford, California. The 12th seeded Florida Gulf Coast University Eagles with the early lead on Mizzou. 29 to 22. And this Tiger team is very concerned with the three. They're trying to guard all the space. But what the Eagles have done so precisely is drive the ball north-south, make strong cuts, and they're attacking an open lane with their action, and it's got them to the foul line. Such a tough matchup for any team, this FGCU program. And this is the bracket here in Stanford. Stanford will be playing next against the 13 seeded Gonzaga Bulldogs. Gonzaga beating Stanford here in Maples Pavilion just last season, a 68 to 63 score. So they have the confidence as an underdog that they can get it done too. Confidence certainly not lacking for this Eagles squad in this game. Looking at that bracket, Elise, I, I love the, the complexity of some of our games. You know, as I look at this tournament as, as a whole, sometimes the first round you're seeing some really good teams. But the games themselves are so intriguing here in Stanford. And, and you're seeing it play out right now. And a big foul there. Rosemarie Julian, the leading scorer for the Eagles, has had the guard of Sophie Cunningham. Picks up her third personal. And you see she's going to have to take a seat on the bench. Yeah. The emotional leader and the yeah. leader in terms of scoring. Yeah, and that a lot of pressure on her. You know, that matchup is incredibly difficult with so the Tigers have really isolated her on the block and has made her play a tremendous amount of post defense. Erica Nelson now gets the matchup. She already has two fouls, so she switches off. And 
now the post down low. Knocked away from Green, and another turnover forced by this Eagles defense. Yeah. Trying to down. Long, round tree the board. Just love the, 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 this chess match that we have here in Stanford. Uh, fouls are going to contribute to to the realities of it, but we've got a real chess match of styles, and we've got a real chess match of how to attack the different advantages your team has. It, this is fascinating, at least. Nazar Newell picking up her second personal, so a lot of different players on both sides in foul trouble. The defense collapsing on Cunningham. She kicks it out. This is Aldridge finding a seam but can't finish. And the foul is called in the act of shooting. Aldridge just doing a good job of persistence. Just getting her body turned. Good call. Good call in that situation. With just a persistent drive. And I'd like to see Mizzou have some versatility to their offensive attack because this is a very versatile. And right now they're pretty much trying to play high-low or spread floor into the block. Well, Lauren Aldridge at the line, one of the best stories in all of college basketball. She is in law right now. They call her Lawyer Lauren. <laughs> she transferred from Kansas after grad degree in three years. She says her day starts about 6 a.m. and finishes at 11.30 when she goes to bed, and it's non-stop all day long. I don't know how she's finding time to study right now. An, an, an amazing story. I met her when she was a junior in high school at a Big 12 conference tournament, sat with them watching the game. She was, she was sharp at that age. I can only imagine what kind of lawyer she's going to be. And she wants to be involved in sports administration and back to the game that's given her so much, which is great. Well, these last two minutes to me are vital. How you close halves. He's trying to dow. The first step is there. And that is a blocking foul. Aldridge trying to get over and get in the lane, get established, but looks like she was inside the circle. See, the, clo the closeout right there is just, it's just not sound, to be honest with you. You're not in a wide stance. So what you get is a direct north-south drive into prime real estate. And it's really hard for your... You can see Aldridge trying to get there. You, you just can't get there that fast when it's that direct. Well, I give her credit. I know I wouldn't want to stand in and try to take a charge <laughs> on the <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, she is moving when she gets in the lane. Six-point lead for the underdog Eagles, the 12 seed against the at-large team from the SEC, Missouri Tigers. This is Cunningham. Draws the defense in the air and then draws the block foul. <laughs> and if that's on Nelson, that will be her third. Yeah. Yeah, the, one of the real storylines is the situation for the Eagles. And it's close. That block charge is a very difficult call, but the officials seem to have a good, good look at it. The line a lot better, she at least. She does an excellent job of not only getting there, but then knocking him down. 83%. Yeah. And you're right, she came into this game with 143 attempts. Yeah. And already, we're not even at halftime. This is her eighth attempt. Yeah. No, excuse me, that's her sixth attempt. Six of six from the line. Four-point separation, two minutes to go. Foul trouble for Florida Gulf Coast University. Interesting finish to this first half. And you can see the body language now for the Tigers saying, oh, you can see the shoulders. Another foul. They have called this game tightly for both sides. And which team is going to adjust to the way this is being called, I think, with so many different players and fouls. Yeah. Been a, good, been a good look at at the Missouri staff right there, the Missouri team right there. What what a great job they've done here. You know, watching the evolution of that program, all right, into an NCAA regular visitor and into an NCAA regular winner. You know, and, and you know, it's just kind of become part of their culture. Well, that's a building process to get in. You got to give them a lot of credit 
even though this is a really contested contest, first round for them. Robin Kinchlin, 21 seasons as a head coach, the last eight at Missouri. He was the SEC Coach of the Year last season, and a big three ball there for the Eagles. And, and you know the separation right now for the Eagles might be baseline out of bounds. They have executed that to a level that's almost art form, and they're scoring incredibly efficiently. They go down low to Cunningham. How did she get that one to go? It looks like she was trying to attack. Sophie, you just, I tell you, keep your eye on number three. She's a show in herself. And she now has 18 points, but another answer by China Dow, her second three ball in a row, and she's got 12. We got a game within the game here, Elise, and China dealing with Sophia down there, but she's got her own offensive arsenal she's bringing to the, to the tussle. And another first three on one fast break, little look off and the finish. That is Jessica Katsani. Well, Jess Ice has, has absolutely exhibited two on one to its highest degree. Kept the ball alive, able to finish because she was never truly picked up. An 11 point lead for FGCU. It's Aldridge trying to get it to Cunningham, and the block called. Coming up at halftime, it's the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. We'll have updates on the nine seed Oklahoma State versus the eight seed Syracuse, American University versus UCLA, and Nebraska versus A. The FGCU Eagles with a 10 point lead as the underdog 12 seed here in Stanford, California. The Missouri Tigers in foul trouble. Eagles have taken advantage. They started by going to the hole, spreading you out, and now they have heated up from the three-point line. Five of nine from deep for the Eagles. Well, that, that, that's, that's really set the stage for this last 30 seconds, and it's got to feel really good about the game plan, the implementation of the game plan, and kind of just their roles within a scheme that they play. It's been Sophie Cunningham with 18 points to lead the way in the first half for the Tigers. And another foul called, this one on the ground. And that is the second one on the sixth year senior. Yes, that's right, six year senior Taylor Gradgen. No, excuse me, she's heading to the line. Gradgen heading to the line with the Tussled down. And she cannot get that one to go. You know, we talked about, I, I talked at 638 about a key timeout for Missouri and where the tempo had been somewhat controlled. It was, it was a six point separation. I was curious to see how the Tigers would finish the half. To, to be honest with you, the Eagles with that change and brought back another streak of their own. Two, and it's Roundtree pulling it. Probably had a couple more seconds to try to get a better look. But as it stands at halftime here in Stanford, California, the FGCU Eagles leading the five, two years in a row. She's come off the bench and been tournament MVP. She's a scorer, and this team's defense has really been a key and a huge foul right there for FGCU. That is the fourth foul on Erica Nelson. Great point, you know, and we talked about this at the halftime, and that's, that's the idea that you can see the substitution right there. Four fouls. Now, the Tigers took a different philosophy. They sat players with two. So they've got three to give up in this second half. That could be a factor, because I'm, I'm telling you, as, as good as the Eagles played in the first half, this is going to be a second half game to determine the winner. The Tigers have nine points to try to make up in these final two quarters. A long time spent on the bench in the first half because of foul trouble is number 22, Jordan Frerichs. But she's called for the walk. And she got herself in a situation where she was looking for a pitch, but you got to give the Eagles credit. They're helping recovery, and by that I mean getting back to a prospective receiver is outstanding in this game, and that was an example. Good move down low off the bench. 
Lisa Starevichka in place of Erica Nelson coming up and big with the bucket. She's got some fire about her. You know, yesterday in her practice, she kind of walked over, and you could see her. She kind of talked to us like, I'm ready to get in. I'm ready for the game. And you can see she's ready to go today. She played a career high 33 minutes in the Atlantic Sun Tournament Championship game. She's been bothered by knee problems throughout her career, and they just have felt like wanted to limit her, but you hear, look at that little hesitation <laughs> fake. They practiced that. That was one of the first I things know. they did in warm-up. You, you look at that and you're thinking, post-up offense, but that is how they look at the game. They just kind of turn it in a way that it's unusual what they do, but very effective because you don't see it a lot. Now post up offense with a five foot six inch guard, Steradichka. <coughs> now again, another personal. This one on Frerichs. Spent a lot of time on the bench after really good early minutes. Missouri was tied until with FGCU until Frerichs picked up that second foul. And with her, the Eagles outscored the Tigers by nine. A, a really key piece that, that was sitting out. And another key piece playing with three fire, Rosemary. I think she is essential for the finishing capability of Eagles team. She's going to have to find a way to not pick up that fourth or ultimately that fifth. A 13 point lead for FGCU. This is the largest of the game. Kick out to Porter for three. That one long. Five six point guard coming down with the board. I still like that action for the Tigers. I think it was more natural to kind of how they play. I think they need to diversify a little bit. I still like that action. That's Gratigen finding a seam with the recovery by Herbert Jackson. Nearly picked by UL, but the Tigers recover and head the other way. Yeah. Great, great high-low play. I love the pass right to the high post. Looking over the top, Sophie had that big seal on the finish. You'd call it a post-to-post -post pass, except for that Sophie Cunningham's a guard, just happens to be <laughs> six foot one. But she's got 20 points now, already above her season average of 18. Yeah, and under 10 shots to get them. Nazarin trying to take off. That one going off of a Tiger, so. Picture. Perfect, look at that. That pin, she even held that spot and asked for the ball away from her. That The patience to understand. Great execution of the high low. Baseline drive there. Now the Tigers off and running. One on two. Cunningham with a spin. Oh, what an open court move by I Really like the presence of the Tigers right now. I think you're really seeing the ball club that, that throughout the year was really a dominant rebounding team, a very efficient offensive team. You can start to see the personality coming out right now. Cunningham, 8 of 10 from the floor, perfect from the line, and she has 22. Amber Smith on the ground, called for the foul. Great outlet pass right there. Now watch what work here. Spin. Got that, that ability to, 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 to frame her body in a way of balance to finish. That, 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 that's a graceful finish in a tough, congested area. This is where the Eagles burn the Tigers in the first half on the baseline out of bounds play. This time the Tigers hold. Boy, China got into the game quick. You can see she's an important element in this matchup against Missouri. Reading the defense, taking it hard to the rack, can't get the finish. And the Tigers' defense holds again. This game has been tightly officiated, and another foul called away from the ball. Yeah, kind of in a bad situation there. <laughs> so, officials right on top of that. Taylor Gratigan saying, Wait, I'm the one called for the foul? Yeah. They had first contact there. Porter with a pretty move down low. The natural lefty finishing. Well, a good step through to that dominant left hand on the finish. Oh, looked like a lot of ball, but some body there. And China Dow makes sure that she draws that foul. 
what, what happened? See that closeout right there? That's a post player. In most cases, post players make a measured closeout. But because of the, the ability to, for Florida Gulf Coast University to spread the floor, that closeout's longer. And it's been a problem for the Tigers. So Porter picks up the foul on that play. That is her third personal. And yes, if you're wondering, Ford related to the Porter Brothers or Missouri. The road to the Frozen Four rises up tomorrow with the 2018 NCAA Hockey Selection Special at noon Eastern on ESPNU and the ESPN app. And you can visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. So Dow now four of six from the line, 14 points off the bench for the Eagles. And a nine point. Cunningham looking for space, finds it, no call, but instead airballs the three and a little smile on her face. Let's watch this right here. Any contact at all, and the Eagles feel it and try to go draw down. But I, I agree with the officials. I, 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 I'd like to see, you know, a, a normal kind of physicality to the game. I think that was normal, even though the player went down. I think the officials did a good job on that. I, I give them credit. This is Dow with the pretty cut and the contact. And she will head the line again. She is so strong. Boy, and the off the ball, screen, separation. See how she gets that separation? By that, I mean Aldridge is probably, you know, three or four feet from her. And now you've got an opportunity to play two-on-one basketball, and what the Eagles have just made a living on two-on-one tonight. Well, they need to make a leave, living at the free throw line. It, it, it really could have been good in the first yeah. half. They were 6 of 15 from the foul line in the first half, Coach. And yeah. even with that, they had a nine-point lead. Yeah, the, the story was their nine-point lead. The even greater story was if they just make their free throws, that's a 15 to 18-point separation. And they're not a great free-throw shooting team. They are a great three-point shooting team. They are a great passing team. But they're, they're honestly below average at the free-throw line. Another foul called. And if that's on yeah. Julian, that is her fourth. Erica Nelson already on the bench, yeah. her starting point guard with the four fouls. Big story right there. And Julian, the 5'11 defender. Yeah. And that's a tough just trying to get over the top of the screen. The officials have called this on both sides. They've been consistent. Now, I like a lot of what Missouri is doing in the second half. They're, they're very natural to their normal sets. You're, you're posting Sophie up, but it's kind of in, in normal action and letting it be kind of just just a, a play that's part of their offense. And find open areas in that regard. I really like where I see Missouri going offensively. We'll see if it plays out. But getting her just naturally into spots, getting other players naturally into spots, then letting the mismatches play out. Katani picking up her second personal Cunningham from the line. Eight of eight. She has 24 points. We still have five minutes to go in the third. She averages 18, so had to put this Tiger team on her back in the first half with so many starters on the bench with foul trouble. China Dow for three long in the by Frericks. Real solid half-court defense on that possession by Missouri. Cunningham getting inside, no call at the board. Out to three. Katani was hot in the first half. Can't get that one to go, but another board. Out to UL, and she can't get that one to go. Yeah. For Frerichs, that's her eighth rebound of the game. Double team on Cunningham down low. It leaves Frerichs open, wide open, but not close for the redshirt senior on the jumper. The Eagles hanging tough in the first five minutes after halftime. They have an eight-point lead. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capri. You know, it was interesting. We talked to Robin about the recruitment of Sophie. 
And she talked about even her beginning time there. So she was probably in junior high then, you know, knowing that this was a player that they wanted to be part of the program and her ability has really played out to change their program in a, such a positive direction. And she draws another foul on the Eagles. This one on Nazrin Uel. Well, fouls are possibly a story here, but FGCU has done a great job of, of you know, they play about eight, nine, nine players. Nobody plays a game. Nobody averages 30 minutes a game. So they're used to going to their bench to a degree, and they've handled foul trouble pretty admirably to this point. Both team team fouls. We've seen a lot of free throw shooting and a lot of fouls. And 17 fouls on FGCU, 19 on the Tigers. China Dow might have slid that back foot. No call. And it's away with it. And only the second turnover for the Eagles. Dowd had one earlier in the game. That's only the second turnover for this Eagle team. That's Aldridge trying to get three. Can't do it. Radigan coming away with the board and another foul called. Those are costly. Those fouls right there that happen out of frustration because you don't score. There have been two of them, but now you've got you've got the ability to score at the line. Although that might be a strategy at least because the Eagles have not been particularly good line in this game. She knocks down the first one, but you're right, coach. As a team, the Eagles just 13 of 24 from the strike. But the key number there is 24. 24 attempts over a team that's more physical and only 14. That's a separation. Even if them, them fishing at the line, they're still getting there more. That is a sign, you know, that, that you like to see as a coach if you're the Eagles coach. And a huge foul against Missouri for Fredericks, her fourth, but a big three ball by Cunning. It doesn't matter who's on the bench or who's on the floor. She is putting points on the board, her 29th point. And now just a five-point lead for the Eagles. They led by one point. Three points is their largest. And now at six, Sophie Cunningham, the outstanding two-time All-SEC performer with 29. And this one on just 13 attempts. She's 9 of 13 from the floor. And a perfect 10 of 10 from the line. Her team in all kinds of foul trouble. Well, she's really diversified her attack. She's off the block, scoring, catch and shoot. She's screening and moving, doing all the things for the Tigers. And you can feel some momentum coming on that Missouri bench right now. And the foul trouble continuing to mount for the Eagles. That is the third on Katani. And Aldridge, the redshirt junior, a transfer from Kansas, knocking the first. Well, she's such an efficient package, very cerebral, sees the very reliable in open situations and at the free throw line. And the Dow, the pump fake, easy bucket. For the senior. Well, that's been a problem for the Tigers. The ability to guard ball at those post positions away from the basket. China going in a direct route, getting to the basket and scoring in an open lane. If you are just joining us, FGCU does not have a player on their roster that is six feet or taller. They are little, they're fast, they love to shoot the three. And it's a mismatch game of you stay big if you're Missouri and have your bigs chase around those three-point shooters? Or do you counter and go small and change your system? Yeah, the, the complexity of watching the styles of play to here has just been fascinating in this game. Because you had a, a really moving part because fouls have caused some issues. But Florida Gulf Coast University has presented a, a three-point shooting team that's got all over the court. Missouri's out there at that point and have had a hard time getting in their defensive rhythm. No foul called, shuffling her feet as quarter and the turnover force, just the third of the game against the Eagles. Coming up next will be the hometown Stanford Cardinal, the four seed out of the Pac-12, Daga, the tournament champion in the WCC. Boy, and another good one. The last two times these two teams fed, faced each other here, 
Gonzaga walked away with a win. And the three ball going down by Aldridge. They needed a big shot. And the Tigers have pulled within four. Yeah. This is Adderley with the answer with a big three ball. And the bench going nuts for the Eagles. They run that screen on the weak side. They separate and... Golly, are they good at putting the ball in the right shooter's hands at the right time. This is Porter left wide open after the screen for Cunningham. Again, tons of space, but that one is long. Tipped out, nice play by Michael, keeping it alive, and another possession for Mizzou. Porter with her right hand getting the bucket. Love Porter's adaptation. Got herself inside, got herself in movement, used her length, great finish for Porter. Sliding her feet again, no foul, yes. Porter. Called for the body on the foul. You see her coming here, I thought she did a really good job, but you can ah. see the foul, that, that's a yep. good call by the officials. It wasn't the body, it was that offhand coming down. This has been a very tightly called first round matchup. A lot of fouls. 18 fouls called. FGCU, they have two starters that have spent most of the half on the bench, and here comes one of them. Erica Nelson, number 11 in green, with four fouls, is back on the floor. Right. A real story, right? Can you play with four fouls? Because for Edu to realize this upset. They're going to need some players to contribute in the fourth quarter that are sitting on four fouls. The other starter with four is Julian. Their leading scorer. She has 12 points in this game. Cunningham going in, lowering the shoulder, and called for the offensive foul. And that is her third foul. So... The one player Missouri cannot afford to lose is Cunningham, who has 29 in this game. They're a pretty good job of getting to the spots on the floor. That, that's been a story for FGCU. They have really tried to do what I call early work. Their position's on the floor, and they're getting rewarded for it. The Eagles led by nine at halftime. They increased their lead to 13. It's now seven, under a minute to go here in the third. China Dow again getting the defender in the air and an easy for senior. Talking closeouts by post players and going north-south has really been an offensive feature for this Eagle attack. Dow now with 19 points to lead the way for the Eagles. China trying to defend a moving Sophie going to the block right there. That man, you can see foul trouble is causing him to look. He, now we're seeing Rosemarie coming into the game also. China Dow with two. Sports Center tonight after boxing on ESPN with John Anderson and Kenny Mayne. They'll have updates from Portland as the Trailblazers try to extend that win streak to 12 games. Plus LeBron and the Cavs finish up their six game road trip in Chicago. And which Sweet 16 teams impressed the most? Sports, to, Sports Center tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern, and the ESPN app. Timeout called, cannot get the ball in. And we have a good one, an eight-point lead for the underdog. Hands forward, that's Jill Barta. Keep an eye on her. She is an exceptional junior and going to be really fun to watch in that game. That's Nelson. Can't get it to go as the third quarter expires. And we are on the brink of an upset as the 12 seeded FGC turnover situation 16 to 3. Florida Gulf Coast University, 16 points off of that, and their bench has contributed 34 to the Tigers, only six. And look at them all leaning to where Sophie Cunningham is. She gets it on the block, kicks it out to Amber Smith, and that one is short. And the board by Nazrin Uel. Good look. Good look for the Tigers. Good action inside. You know, those are the type of shots they're going to need to convert, but good offensive action. Adderley getting in the lane, cannot finish. The gratitude in there 
with the O board poked away by Cunningham, one of the rare turnovers yeah. for the Eagles. And another foul call, this one on Gratigan. That is her third. The sixth year senior from Wisconsin has a 4.0 GPA, getting her master's degree. An incredible story after two ACL tears. Is reaching in there. <laughs> Yeah, that's, taking the worst of that one and getting called for the foul. Yeah, that that left hand was probably in some improper uh, clearance there, right there, if you look at it. But you know, watch your left. That's probably not appropriate for the ball handler, right there. And you can see the They're right there, the reach. Yeah, anything to the face is going to be reviewed, going to be looked at in those situations. Can't obviously call a foul, a uh, common foul on that particular play. Well, if they're looking at Cunningham, she has three personal fouls. And Frerichs already is starting forward for Missouri with those four fouls. Yeah, unsportsmanlike act. Probably a discussion about that going on right now. Players on both sides in massive amount of foul trouble. Nelson with four, the starting guard for the Eagles. She is playing right now on the floor. And Rose Julian also with four for the Tigers. Four fouls on Frerichs. And then three on Cunningham, Aldridge, Smith. Four on Porter. So it's going to be who is left standing here. Nine minutes and change to go here in the final quarter and a turnover trying to hit Frerichs but too much on the pass and it'll be Eagle basketball another turnover yeah a big story here the efficiency of Missouri turning the ball over and not being able to get shots on goal in a, in a catch-up situation down eight with nine to go every possession becomes crucial here one team season is going to end, and one will continue to play the winner of Stanford and Gonzaga coming up next. And another beautiful take. They're known for their three-point shooting, but Nazar Newell, her eagle, getting in the lane for a wide-open bucket. Yeah, and you can see Tigers not wanting to foul that situation, but allowing a highly uh, coveted lay-in. Those are hard to come by in fourth quarter. Cunningham with a pretty feed, but the defense rotating over, and Cunningham called with the charge. That is her fourth foul. She's got 30 points in this game, but now in foul trouble. The next one, she will sit. That's a good call. The feet are set outside of champion of the Atlantic Sun coming all the way out here to Stanford, California and have a 10 point lead on the at large team out of the SEC, the Missouri Tigers, the five seed. Erica Nelson with a bucket out of the timeout and it's now a 12 point and all kinds of foul trouble for the Tigers. Three starters with four personals. The two others have three. And another foul called underneath. The Eagles have their own foul trouble. Four on Julian and four on Nelson. That one, just the second foul on Adderley. You know, both coaches deciding to play on with players with four fouls. You're, you're seeing Julian come in, four fouls. <laughs> and. Uh, Two of their five with four fouls. Sophie Cunningham staying on the floor with four fouls. A lot of trust by the coaching staff, but beat them in the game. It, it, this is a key time right now. So a back, back to a 10-point deficit for the Tigers. They extend their pressure, yeah. which will be tough when you are dealing with foul trouble to put a lot of pressure on. Well, the part that's got to happen is at the ball, they've got to contain because the drives have been direct. Here's another example. Straight line drive to the bucket. Well finishes. She's got nine. She's played a really solid game. The sophomore from California, Marietta. And 
just stepping on the in line. On the other end, it was a bucket with a straight line drive for the Tigers. They shuffle their feet, the weak side there, and just losing her footing is Jordan Chavis and the turnover for Missouri, their 15th of the game and a timeout. On the women's side. Absolutely. The Stanford Cardinal coming up. We, we've got a good one, but boy, we've got a concluding factor here. It's got a lot of drama in it. Now you put the favorite on the Eagles, and they are now in a position to win this game. Cunningham contesting the shot, no foul called. Erica Nelson turns around, not on her. That one will be on China Dow and Sophie Cunningham having to take a couple of breaths. Yeah. She has had very little, if any, rest in this game for Cunningham. Her entire team in foul trouble. That time, China Dow trying to go through her. And the contact having her go to the ground, you can tell she's feeling it a little bit. Oh, it's, there's been a physicality to this game, but th let's talk catch-up basketball. Let's talk about what the Tigers got to do. You got to create possession. They've got to create turnovers. They've got to put the ball. Turnovers that have been the Achilles heel in this game, they got to go away. They've got to be able to score, stop, score, stop. There's Porter finishing strong inside. Well, I like seeing there. I love that weak side pin that she had right now. Now the Tigers have got to play defense, and they've got to get stops to play out of offensively. Nelson taking the big right to the hole. Kayla Michael not moving her for the big on the floor right now, and they see mismatch, and they go. And it's interesting. They're not looking three. They're looking for mismatch on the big post players for the Tigers. Ball poked away, trying to get it to Cunningham down low. Aldridge open for three. They needed that one to go, and it's the heel. Cunningham picks it up, though, and finishes. She's got 32 points, 10 of 14. Well, she is all over the floor. You know, even that anticipation right there, big time for Sophie Cunningham. This is Nelson from three. And the Eagles with a huge lead, extending it to 15 points, matching their largest of the game. And we're getting down <laughs> to the final minutes, Coach. Nelson, four fouls. No problem. No problem. Last five points for the Eagles. She doesn't care. She, she's out there to play and not foul and stay on the floor. A little bit too much body. This is Adderley leaning on Porter down low. That's her third. You know, can Mizzou get the stops? You know, I, I think, you know, you watch them, and, and they can hit a streak offensively. They can get to the foul line. They're about in the one and one A lot of things can happen. But can they get the stops is a huge question. Coming around the screen, that's Chavis. So an 11-point lead, and the foul called, and that's the fifth on Jordan Frericks. And the red shirt senior from Quincy, Illinois is gonna have to take a seat on the bench. Her team down 11. Coach Pinson gonna have to go to her bench right here. And the bench has been a story in this game too. Here she comes. Here's the, that's a pretty direct drive. And it's, wow. I gotta tell you, that is a tough call. Yeah. Yeah. For the fifth year senior, she has had a fabulous career for the Tigers. Second team all SEC. Is one of just three players in Missouri history with a thousand points and a thousand rebounds. And came back for her fifth season this year after missing all of last year with a knee injury. And she's gonna have to watch final five minutes and 20 seconds to see if her Missouri Tigers can come away with what would be an epic comeback. Boy, Erica Nelson has stepped up in the fourth quarter here. You know, she's gonna get a blow right here. Boy, she has been pivotal from an offensive perspective, playing with four fouls, but delivering big for the Eagles. Nelson had the big three ball, four of nine from the floor with 11 points. Steradichka back on the floor for the Eagles. Aldridge trying to get it down low to Cunningham and can't get it through traffic. And you can see the head coach Tigers, Robin Pinchton, 
Scratching her head, trying to come up with some answers. Her team down 13. Boy, time and score situation, even with five to go for FGCU. Oh, and that might be the fifth foul. Who is this going on? It is going on Porter, and that is five. So the second Tiger starter will have to take a seat. You can see the frustration. The fifth personal foul for Sierra Porter, a 6'4 junior from Columbia. And as we mentioned earlier, her two brothers on the Missouri men's basketball team. Her dad, a former coach on this staff of the women and now with the men. Yeah, foul trouble has been a real story for the Tigers. I mean, that having to play with players in the first half, players fouling out in the second half, it's certainly been a part of, of the story that's happened here. A smart move there by Julian. She also playing with four fouls, got it inside, kicked it out. They want to eat as much clock as they can. Dow lowering her shoulder, but the foul called. I went on Nadia Green, the 5'10 freshman out of Chicago. And that is her third. We welcome everybody watching UCLA head on with a victory to round two of the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. An upset brewing here. The Tigers, no good on that three. They need threes to fall and fall in bunches as they trail by 13 to the Florida Gulf Coast University Eagles. And the Tigers taking their final timeout of the game. 422 left in this assistant coach on the staff, a former player under Carl at Florida Gulf Coast University. Boy, and has a compelling style of play. Not, not only the fact they shoot threes, but just the way they pass the ball, move the ball, their efficiency with the basketball. And you're seeing an example right there. The three ball, no good. Rebound brought down by Green. A chance to push. That three ball, no good. Green battling for the board, and it pops out to Aldridge. That's Chavis with the jumper. Yeah, Chavis doing a good job of getting the defender in the air into the ground. But FGC knowing that they're in a time and score situation with 338. Really handling the ball. Chavis deal and she gets it to Aldridge and she's going to go the distance but leaves it short. Nice job by Adderley just running through, not fouling, yeah. but disrupting the shot. And, and, and one of the real times that the Tigers have defensively caused this FGCU offense to turn the ball over. They have been so efficient with the battle. They are competitive and their style is so unique. And a beautiful feed down low, adding to their lead. It's Adderley's. Wait, the talk is always the three point shot, but to me, I have loved watching their precise passing. They have passed the ball so well. And the other thing is, their defensive schemes has really been a part of this story. The way they've been able to congest the post and the way they've been able to defend and play out of their defense. So the third player of the game having to take a seat on the bench with five personals. That is Rose Marie Julian, the leading scorer. Played a great game today for the Eagles. 12 points to go along with a board and an assist and some great defense. Yeah, we've got a 13-point game. And you're running ham. So I'm telling you, that, you know, that keep your eyes on the play on the court because a lot of things can happen. That young lady can put some up in bunches. 33 points for Cunningham. That just her second missed free throw. She is 12 of 14 from the line. Her season high this year, 35 points, career high 42. She's going to need to get there, I think, if the Tigers have a chance at a win. Nelson off the heel. Rebound by Michael. The quick three, no good from Chavis. 
Hustling after the board. Yeah, that's going to be FGCU ball. The Tigers trying to extend pressure. Get it to Steradichka, who handles it no problem. Gets it to Nelson. Cross court over to China. That one long. Boy, this Tiger team have cut the score in bunches right now. They've got to be able, and they're going right into the block to Sophie Cunningham. And she draws the foul. They have continued to try to get the ball to Sophie Cunningham. As we mentioned, 33 points for the Missouri Junior. The problem is no one else in double figures for the Tigers. Yeah, they've had a hard time, you know, conversantly around her. But boy, her play has been outstanding today. You know, they've been, whenever they've been able to efficiently get her the ball readily, she has delivered and delivered again. Jordan Roundtree on the floor for the Tigers. So for Cunningham, 35 points tying a season high. Full court pressure right here. You see Cunningham on the ball playing this fourth four fouls. Sarah again handling the pressure. Eagle is going to run the offense basically to under 10, and you're going to see them spread the floor in, in their action. Cunningham going for the pick. Down to Gratigen. And the jump ball called. Missouri needed that possession, and it yep. goes their way. Yep. Yep. So under a 10 point lead for the 12 seated Florida Gulf Coast University Eagles. This is Roundtree for three. It's short green with the board. This time she takes it inside. That one won't fall. Well, the Eagles in a position now to control their own destiny. You can see them. You can see the excitement kind of growing. Mizzou coming away with the pressure, but handled by China Dow. Good hustle play from her, getting to the ball and kicking it out to her teammate. Let some contact. Lauren Aldridge. Ooh, you hope it's not her leg getting caught underneath, and then China Dow landing on top of her. We well, had two players really going after the ball. You know, both these teams have really laid it out today, you know, from a physical standpoint. But just been so impressed by FGCU and their, their, their game plan was really implemented. When the Tigers attacked it, they stayed sturdy. They played with foul trouble. And you got to give that man, Coach Mesco, a lot of credit. He has developed a system and a unique system that those players really buy into and they really understand their role as well. And they're going to be losing five seniors. He's got some scholarships available down there in Fort Myers, Florida. Why wouldn't you want to play in that system? They have done a fabulous job. Smesco is the first and only coach of this program. You know, he began the program at the NAIA level in 2002, 2003. And this is now an NCAA Division I team. And they've gone eight straight years with 25 or more wins in his program. Yeah, he's an Ohio guy. Played, it grew up as a coach's son, but but also started his head coaching career at Walsh College. That team just went in the Ohio High, I believe, Basketball Hall of Fame. What was interesting, he and I were flying. I was coaching in Cleveland. We're flying to San Antonio for the Final Four. And we get diverted, end up in... Austin get driven from Austin with with a carload of Connecticut fans to the final four that year <laughs> and so he and I were, were hearing about the, the Huskies all the way into San Antonio well, his team right now 
playing like the favorite, even though they are the 12th seed. 12-point lead and a minute to go. Cunning now with a step back three, no good. It looks like a foul will be called on Erica Nelson. You can tell she's frustrated, but you know what, Erica, I think you're all right when you look up at the scoreboard and you have a 12 point lead. Yeah. A 5'8 senior. How much does it mean to her, Erica Nelson, being from Kansas City, Missouri? Yeah. First couple of years of her career at Johnson County, CC. She had tremendous success, and then transferring over GCU. Well, think and about this. You know, she went three quarters and had had a very average kind of statistical performance, picked up four fouls, but in the fourth quarter, she got another level. She literally put the Eagles on their bit in that. that that's what seniors do, and that, that's why seniors are so important in the program. And she did it with four fouls. Nelson finishes with 11 points and four assists here in this round one. The winner of this one will face the winner of Stanford and Gonzaga coming up next here in the Lexington Regional. Saraditchka's free throw, the first one. You can see Too much coach, on it. You can see Coach Pitchin really working right to the very end. You know, the losses are tough in the NCAA, and this. This has had a great year, accomplished a great deal in regard to it. But I don't care accomplished when it comes to an end. That's a tough time. Tigers 24 and 7 entering this game. The look kind of says it all right there. When you see that blank stare and, and you understand opportunity not realized in those situations. But I, I think a lot of the story is opportunity realized with what FGCU has done today. Just a, a brilliant game plan and executed well by each and every member. And it shoots back on the floor. We mentioned Stanford Gonzaga coming up. Texas, Maine, the two Longhorns, and Iowa Creighton, as well as Miss versus Nichols. Great action, all presented by Capital One. Again, a finish left short by the Tigers. Boy, now you're 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 looking right there. At it's a reality of the women's championship right there. There's a winner and loser every game. Boy, that's a tough. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, Sophie that's a tough Cunningham Sophie down. on the side, yes. Cunningham came around, tried to shoot the three. Her team down by 10. You hate to see that. She has played a fabulous game. A true competitor. 10 of 16 from the field for 35 points and even down by 10 she says I'm not leaving this game no and you can see what watch watch your the footwork here you can see that left ankle right there well I tell you she's a, a tough nut I mean so skilled so efficient but has a physicality and has us to her game it's going to be a loss for her but boy her performance you know still is remarkable to me well, she's the hometown kid from Columbia, Missouri. And as we talked with Coach, she knew she wanted to go to Missouri her entire life. And they've gone to the NCAA tournament three years in a row with her on the roster. And she's been the star for all three seasons. She's already top ten all-time in scoring for the Tigers. Her mom, her dad, her sister, her grandpa, all of the Missouri Tigers. And just adding to that legacy for the black and gold. But right now, down by 10. And FGCU, what a performance by the Eagles. Give them all the credit in the world. Their style was a nightmare for the Tigers. They are small. Not a single player on the roster over six feet tall. 
And they're facing 6-4 and 6-1, 6-2. Bigs all over the floor, but the Eagles put it to their advantage being undersized. Yeah, they did. They they turned the table in a lot of ways, but the efficiency of this Eagle team, that shots on goal, limited turnovers, and even the turnovers didn't turn into points for the Tigers. And they were able to realize a separation factor in their efficiency in regard to it. And just, a, boy, it's just going to set up an interesting second round game, too. When you're talking about Stanford and Gonzaga, they're going to have a day to for a very unique system. So the final seconds of this one. No iron on that one. And it's going to be Eagles basketball and their bench coming to their feet. Carl Smesco calling for some subs to give some ovations. The sixth year senior, Taylor Gratigan, out of Cudahy, Wisconsin, getting a big old cheer from her teammates. And you can see the joy of a team win. And it truly is a team win. You know, when you talk about this team, it's hard to, to take focus only on one player. They have so many that contribute in their system and their roles. They play to the nth degree, and you can see a real team win for this Florida Gulf Coast University. And it is a final. Look at the Eagles celebrate their second win in the NCAA tournament as a program. What a win for the Eagles. They knock off the fifth seeded Missouri Tigers and they will go on to face the winner of Stanford and Gonzaga coming up next. Okay.